Good morning, good morning, good morning. Got a word from the Lord, so we're going to get into it. Praise God. I'm, I'm not a hooping preacher, so that's, that's not what we're going to do this morning. But I will uh, give you what God is giving me, and I believe it's going to be a blessing to your life. Let's pray. Father God, we love you. Thank you for this is the day that you've made. Uh, we will rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you, God, for your people that they are anointed to hear. Speak through me. Think through me. In the name of Jesus, God, let this be a revelation that changed their lives forever. And let there be bold soul winners. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Now, I want to talk about uh, the church of influence. The church of influence. A lot of times when people say the word church, of course, they think about a building. We are going to church. We are uh, going to this building where uh, there's you know, praise and worship, offering, preaching, um, and, you know, a lot of people say we're going to church. I want to kind of challenge your mind for this particular teaching to think of the church as a body of believers. Uh, the, the ecclesia uh, is a, an assembly of, of, of believers. It's really a government term of an assembly of people that lives in a particular area and not necessarily a building. So, when I say church, we are like a gang. We're a group. We're, we're, we're a family, all right? We, 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 we come with the same mindset uh, to serve Jesus Christ, but we are, we are coming as a team, all right? So, so that means that if something happens to a physical building, the church still stands. Amen. Let me say that again. If something happens to a physical building, the church still stands. The church is not uh, uh, dependent on what the what happens to a building. Um, the church still stands. So, so first of all, um, when COVID happened, the church didn't shut down because you didn't shut down. Glory be to God. So the church is God's body of believers. All right. So I want to go to um, the story of Peter. Um, Matthew 16, and we can start at verse 13. I'm just going to kind of tell the story, um, and you can read it so that you can get. And I tell the story because we have uh, kids, we have teenagers, we have different people that's listening, and so sometimes they need to get uh, a different type of interpretation of the story, but it's all biblical. And so um, basically Jesus and his disciples were... Uh, together and they were talking and Jesus asked them, who do men say that I am? This is uh, 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 Matthew 16 and starting at the 13th verse. And they, some of, they said, some, some people think you're John the Baptist, Jesus. Some, some people think you're Elijah. Some people think you're Jeremiah, one of the prophets. And Jesus asked them, well, okay, who do you say that I am? And Peter, almost like he couldn't help himself. He said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Now, now this is significant because forever, for years, all right, hundreds and hundreds of years, they had been waiting on this Christ, all right? Just because he was Jesus, they didn't know he was Christ. So that, that's two different things. They knew he was Jesus. They just didn't know he was Christ, all right? So at this time, uh, Jesus says, Peter. You know, or he was asking all the disciples, who, who do men, who, who do you say that I am? All right. I, I understand what they're saying, but what are you saying? And he says, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And then Jesus is like, "Woo! hey, you didn't hear that around town. You, you're not just saying that to say that. That's not a rumor that you heard. God is speaking to you, Peter. You're starting to hear from God. That's the very reason that I came here on earth so that I can repair the breach between man and God. So now you are hearing from God. Wow. And so Peter's like, you know, he, 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 he's looking like, man, did I say that you are the Christ? Really? Did I say that? He was looking surprised. And so this is what I want to get to. Uh, 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 16 and 18. Matthew 16 and 18. Jesus says something very profound here. All right. And so now he says, uh, and I'm reading out of the King James Version. And I say unto you also thee that thou art Peter and upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys 
uh, and I will give unto thee the keys to the kingdom of heaven, and wh whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So at this point, Jesus is giving them power. All right? He's, he's empowering them. Now, I want you to understand that the church is not a building. We are the church. You are the church. All right? So it's not this building. When I say church, don't think of a building. Think about us, the family of God, the people of God. All right? Uh, we always uh, uh, quote the scripture, uh, let your kingdom come, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Who's going to do the work on earth like it's being done on, in, in heaven? His church, his people, his team. That's us. That's you. All right. Praise God. So that you'll understand that. So, so Jesus was like, um, on this rock or on this revelation that, 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 that Jesus is the Christ, I'm going to build a church, a group. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to build a body of believers. He wasn't talking about building a building. He was saying, I'm getting ready to get my people together, and the gates or the influences of hell will not prevail, or the influences of hell will not win over this group that I'm getting ready to put together. Glory be to God. So the influence of hell, uh, um, um, the, there are gates. The gates to your heart are your ear, it's the ear gate. You know, that's how things come into your heart or things that you speak, those grow out of your heart or the things that you see. So the Bible says guard your heart because out of it flows the issues of life. So that's how things get into your heart. So Jesus is saying that I'm going to build my church and the influences of the world will not prevail against this church. What's going on on the outside, these people are going to have my word in their heart. They're going to, they're going to speak my word. They're going to hear my word. They're going to do my word. All right? So now you have this group of believers that, that are now starting to communicate with, with the spirit. All right. So let's go to Romans chapter 8. My favorite chapter in the Bible is Romans chapter 8. Um. Uh, and so, um, let's go to verse 19. And uh, familiar scripture. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. Basically, uh, the, the, the scriptures are saying everybody is waiting on the manifestation or the maturing of the sons of God. The scriptures talk about when I was a child, I spoke as a child, but now that I've become a man, I put away childish things. Another thing uh, 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 about that scripture is a maturing. There's a maturing. You know, sometimes there are Christian people that can be saved for 30 years and still act like a child. There are people that can still can be saved for 50 years and still act like a child. They, you act more worldly than you do spiritually because you don't have that maturing or you don't have that relationship with God. So, so check this out. The scripture says that all of creation is waiting on these sons. All right? These sons or that church. They're waiting on the manifestation of, of that church. Jesus says, upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. All right. And, 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 and so what, what 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 we need to understand is, well, then how do we become sons? How do we become this church? All right. All of this stuff that's going on in the world, it seems like the world is prevailing at times. Coronavirus, uh, murders, all of this stuff is going on. Sometimes it seems like the world is prevailing. All right. So how do we become these mature sons of God? How do we work this power that we were talking about? Where is this where is this uh, 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 church that Jesus was talking about? I'm glad you asked. Let's go to Romans 8, 14. Just go up a little. All right. For as many that are led by the uh, spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Let me say it again. For as many as are led by the spirit of God. They are the sons of God. So Peter said a revelation that thou art the Christ based off the spirit of God. And Jesus was like, flesh and blood did not reveal that to you. My father is speaking to you. My father is communicating with you. So the scripture says, when you are led by the spirit of God, you're a son. When you are led by the spirit of God, you're a son. 
When you are led by the Spirit of God, you're a son. All right? So all creation is waiting for these sons. Now, if you're led by your flesh, basically, you're going you're gonna to operate like a child. But now, I'm talking about the, the, the title of this message is called The Influence of the Church. God is causing, he's calling for his sons to stand up. I had this, I, I got this vision in my head um, that forever I, 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 want, I wanted somebody to crown me. I wanted somebody to, to, to give me their influence, basically. And, and the Lord was telling me, you have your own influence. You have your own crown. You have your own uh, uh, anointing. And you're sitting down, and your crown is hanging over your head. And when you grow up, you'll have the influence that you seek. You'll have the crown that you seek. Um, see, God can, get, can have something for you. But if you're not mature enough to take hold to it, then, then, you, then that influence might hurt you. In other words, uh, my daughter, um, and, and she, she, she know I always tell this story about her. My daughter, she's 16, and on her 16th birthday, she got a car, all right? She got a car. The car is hers, but she's still uh, becoming comfortable driving, so we still have to work on that. So I can't give her the keys yet until she grow up. You see that? The car is hers, but I can't give her the keys yet until she grows up, all right? So maturity, you can have access to everything, all right? Healing, prosperity, whatever it is, deliverance. But sometimes those things don't come because we won't grow up. Glory be to God. But I'm telling you this morning, we're growing up. We're growing up in the things of God. I am no longer a child. I am a son. Glory be to God. If you're a female, you're, you're a son as well. You're a daughter, well, however you want to say it, but you're mature in the things of God. Now, the reason why I'm saying this is because Jesus says, on this rock, I will build my church. Now, a lot of times, if you meet somebody out and about, you start to tell that person, hey, I, you need to come to my church. Oh, yeah, you need to come to my church and get some prayer. You a heathen. <laughs> you need to come to my church and get some prayer. Oh, look, look, you need to come to my church so they can pray you so you can get healed. You need to come to my church, and, and you want to bring them into this building when actually their encounter with you, they're already in church. So instead of bringing the person into the building, the maturing of, of, of the Christians nowadays in the kingdom of God is, is going to be, you're going to be the church wherever you are. Glory be to God. It's no longer that you have to bring somebody to church. Uh, uh, you know, because during COVID, we couldn't come to church. So do we stop the things of God because we can't come into a building? No. You are the church. Glory be to God. If there was, a, there was people in front of me, I'd say, say out loud, we are the church. Say out loud, I am the church. Glory be to God. So you have to use your influence to win people to Jesus. You have to use your influence to win people to God. You are the church. When he said to Peter, on this rock, I will build my church, why would you say you're going to build something and you know you're getting ready to die? <laughs> Jesus is getting ready to die. Right after that, um, after that revelation, he starts to tell the disciples, hey, man, I'm getting ready to get out of here. All right? He built the church so that you can be gods in this earth. Or you can have the influence that Jesus had in this earth, that you can heal the sick, that you can raise the dead, that you can be prosperous, that you can be happy, that you can be delivered. Not so that everything left with Jesus. No. All right, a lot of times we want to put everything on the pastor. Boy, I'm telling you, when you, when you meet my pastor, he's going to lay hands on you, and that devil going to come out of you. So what if the person don't have a, a, a ride that day? That devil going to stay in them. What if they don't have, a, you know, the money to get the Uber? <laughs> you know, the devil going to stay in them. No. When they meet you, they, they met the church. When they meet you, they meet the church. Some of you are coaches that's your church. Your, your team is your church. Your team is your church. Some of you are coaches. Some of, uh, 
Man, a violin player. I'm talking about a person that's a virtuoso at, at vi playing violin. Let's say if that person, you know, they were a student at one time, and then now they're a virtuoso on, on violin. And now they have people, they're doing violin lessons, all right? And they're building their, their own orchestra. At, those people who you are talking to, those people who come to get lessons from you, that's your, that's your, you use that influence and then you become the church to them. When they have a problem, sir, ma'am, um, I, I, I've been dealing with certain things, you know, and this is not about uh, music in the, same, in the same, this is not about music. I just want to, I just want to talk to you about something. You become the church to them. All right? You become the church. If you're at a hair salon, some of us uh, 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 you know, at, are at barber shops and, and hair salons and stuff like that, and they're having all types of conversations. It's time for you to be the church. It's time for you to be the church in the sector that God put you in. All right? Your gift is bringing people to you so that God can get the glory. Hallelujah. Not just at this building called church. You are the church. So no matter where you are, if there's a sector of influence where people come around you because of your gift, if people come around you because you can sing, if people come around you because you're an architect, if people come around you because you can play ball, that is your church. Those people you influence for the kingdom of God. Well, I can't do that. Grow up. That's why he say you got to be a son. You got to be a son. You got to grow up. That's what I've been telling myself, man. I got to grow up. I got to grow up. I've been fumbling over my schedule for so long, triple booking things. I got to grow up. I got to grow up. I got to grow up. You, most of the time, you find somebody to blame. Can't blame nobody. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. I got to grow up. When I take the blame, when I accept the blame, when I accept that, that I could do something about it, um, well, when I accept the blame, then that means I could do something about it. Most of the time, when you blame people, you, you're expecting them to do something. And that means you're giving them control over that part of your life. Uh-uh. I take the blame. I got it. Nope, it's my fault. Uh-uh, I'm standing up right now. I'm becoming a son. Glory be to God. I'm going to use every bit of my influence to bring, to build God's kingdom. Not just, hey, wait till you meet my pastor. Ooh, wait till you meet. No, no, we're going to take you to church so the saints can put some oil on your forehead. Glory be to God. Yeah, we can't wait. When is church? Next Sunday. Uh, we don't have church this time. Well, I got to work at 11. Well, I can't come. Now I got to pick up a kid. The people can make a lot of excuses not to come to the building, but when you are the church, you'd be like, let's do this right now. You know, let's do this right now. We can pray for you right now. Glory be to God. Not when I get to church. As, 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 a, as a pastor, as a man of God, I had to still get out of that, that mode of doing things only in church or in the building. Hallelujah. Uh, man of God, M meet somebody at a, a, a grocery store. Uh, man of God, uh, I need prayer. You want to pray right now? Aisle nine, we're praying right now in the middle of aisle nine. Give me your hands. Let's go. Let's go. Father God, and I pray just like I would be in the church. I'm praying on aisle nine because I'm not waiting till we get into this building. We are the church. And so what, when I, what I'm saying is, is we become the church then our influence spreads into the schools, spreads into the neighborhoods, spreads all over the place because we are the church and we're not just waiting to come to a building. Oh, we're going to rock and roll wherever you... Uh, my mom used to say, um, I'm going to get you wherever you act up at. Yeah, she used to, yeah, and she would do it too. My mama used to wear them high heels and and she don't, you don't want to get hit with one of them heels. Um, and so um, if you act up in the store, she's going to get you in the store. If you act up at the church, she's going to get you at the church. If, she, if, you, if, if, if you act up um, 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 anywhere, my mama going to get you. And that's where we are as a kingdom. Oh, we, we ain't going to wait till we get to church. Oh, wait till Satan, wait till I get to this building, then I'm going to handle you. Uh-uh. You're going to let the, 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 in, the enemy take over your house, take over your kids, take over your marriage, take over your finances, and, and you only engage in a building? No way. No way. We are the church. 
All right, and it's time to step up. Glory be to God. I'm growing up. I'm becoming a son. The Bible says those who are led by the Spirit of God, those are sons of God. Lord, what do you want me to do? Or I, I just sh- search the scriptures and, and get some inspiration to do something. But I, will, I refuse to let the enemy beat me up, but I only have victory when I come inside of a building. No way. No way. Anytime somebody encounter me, anytime somebody encounter you, they are running into the church of Jesus Christ. Glory be to God. The government of the kingdom of God. And, 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 and we declare that the kingdom comes and the will of God be done on earth as it is in heaven. Glory be to God. So ain't no trouble in heaven. Ain't no murders in heaven. Ain't no sickness in heaven. All right? Glory be to God. So let's get on our job to bring that same kingdom, that same influence down here on earth. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. That's all I have. God, Father God, we love you. Thank you that we're expanding our minds to do your kingdom business and your kingdom work on earth as it is in heaven. Let everybody that we run into feel the presence of God on our lives. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. We praise you, God. Thank you for spiritual boldness that I am using my influence whoever you bring in my area to to, to spread your kingdom, to pray for those who are sick, hallelujah, to give information of the kingdom of God. God, give me the boldness that when darkness speaks, light, the light in us speaks louder than that darkness. And we praise you right now. Glory be to God, hallelujah. Glory to the Hallelujah, we praise you right now. Thank you for more grace. Thank you for more influence. Hallelujah. Thank you for spiritual boldness. Make us more bold, God. Make us more bold. Not bold when we come together uh, 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 on Sundays and Wednesdays, but bold when we're out in this dark world. Help us to be the light to people that we know and people that we don't know. We praise you, God. We worship you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. We love you. Thank you. This morning is, is uh, uh, Faith and Deliverance. Thank you for allowing me to be here. Uh, I can't wait for y'all to see what Nate has done in here. It's gorgeous. Um, and Free Life, uh, if you need prayer, there are people on, um, on, 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 on the Zoom that if you need prayer, you just put it in the chat and somebody you, you'll break off into a room. Somebody can pray with you and pray for you. Uh, We love you. There's a lot going on this morning. Uh, Jesus is Lord. Use your influence this week. All right? There are people that's around you. You're at your job. You know, I don't care if you're uh, a a construction worker. There are people that's around you that come around you every day. Use your influence. Don't wait till you get to a building. Use your influence to build God's kingdom every day. Amen? All right. God bless you. Have a great week.